ホノレヘクロリエキテアチワヘマンガロンホキキテマトテフェノアヘファカロパイキンアタガタカトヘメヒアチキアイホアナナテチマタガメテファカムチガオガミアカトヘメヒマハナヘメヒアロハティナイキ
Uh, really, the title of this really underpins how the whānau have been the core part of our project throughout the five weeks. Um, it's based around their experiences and to try and learn from these to better their health and their experiences with healthcare in the future. With that in mind, this research aimed to identify barriers and enabling factors to effective healthcare among whānau based on their shared experiences and their attitudes. By talking to whānau, it was hoped that barriers could be identified and hopefully some solutions um, could take them away and we could further develop and build on those enabling factors that allowed the whānau to get good health care. This aim was hugely, hugely, hugely supported by our partners in all of this, CART. CART stands for Consultancy, Advocacy and Research Trust. Um, this is a Kaupapa Māori whānau order organisation um, that aims to provide afina advocacy and support for whānau here in the South Wellington region. Um, CART has been our client throughout this whole five weeks and has had a crucial part to play within this project. Throughout our research project, we endeavoured to have a strong Kaupapa Māori approach, particularly within our whānau interviews, and thankfully we had the support of the CART staff to ensure our tikanga throughout the interview process aligned strongly with Kaupapa Māori approach. Aiming to have this strong Kaupapa Māori approach developed a trusting relationship between us and the whānau during the interviews. Keeping in mind the strong Kaupapa Māori methodology we aim to incorporate, we try to align our research project within the whānau order model framework um, that has been produced by many Māori leaders. The whānau order model aims to modify the way that we look at problems. The model is centred around whānau, and whānau are at the very core of this model. This model encompasses a wide range of factors, all leading to healthcare outcomes. It has to be noted, however, that as we are medical students, we're looking at this through a health lens. But there are other issues and other areas which we have not mentioned, many of them massively broad, encompassing multiple different areas um, that have an impact that we haven't been able to mention through this research. There are seven principles of the whānau order model. These are ngā kaupapa tukuriho, whānau opportunity, best, outcome, best whānau outcomes, coherent service delivery, whānau integrity, effective resourcing, and competent and innovative uh, provision. Another point that I just want to make clear is that this is a very complex issue on multiple levels. And it is a very complex topic. So we have tried to pull out things um, as best as we can. However, we do realise that things do overlap and everything really is connected. Our presentation today will first go through the literature, trying to provide a bit of context so we can place ourselves in some of the research that's done um, in the past. We'll then move on to the methods, going through how we went about this research, how we did this research with the whānau and with CART. Um, from here, we'll talk about our analysis and eight key themes uh, that we identified and then from there, try and look at some solutions to some of the issues, issues that were raised. We'll then close with the summary of strengths and weaknesses before concluding. Throughout, uh, some, some of the whānau from CART have very kindly agreed to read out some of their narratives to make sure their voices are heard. The understanding I got was actually quite, I was actually quite wrapped with how the doctors had treated me. They didn't call the pigs. They didn't make me feel rushed, although it was an out of situation. It was a bit of, there's an issue that I find I won't go in there as they have to report it to the authorities. It's a real fear. I only went to the hospital two weeks after the stabbing. Uh, it's not uncommon for my house to be used as a backyard doctor surgery. As a bros don't want to go to hospital, even with huge nasty gashes, they could be infected. Just get a cotton a needle, <coughs> pull the alcohol, pull the alcohol on, uh, not much of it, and not the good stuff. Mm. Just the girl's wine. <laughs> we stitch it up ourselves. Uh, the main reason for not presenting initially to hospital was due to fear that they'll call the police. Don't like dealing with the police, even if you're on the ground bleeding to death, we are seen as a perpetrator, not a victim. Mm. 
got to the point and I did have to go in. The doctor was a real professional. She asked me straight up why I didn't come in, but didn't hang on it. Picks me up and told me to go home and go hug my kids as I was lucky to still be here. She was really real. She was really good. Good to come across a doctor who is there to do their job and accept you for who you are, not what you are. Thank you. Um, I'd next like to hand over to Blake, who's going to talk about the literature review. So, the purpose of um, investigating and uh, trawling through the literature was to find out what we already know from current research, um, what we don't know, um, and then use this to inform our methodology and practice, um, because this is somewhat groundbreaking in this respect as it hasn't been done before um, in New Zealand. So there were three main uh, sort of key points in the literature that were, were brought out. The first one is cost. The second one is um, Māori experiences of the health system. And the third one um, is the, are the issues of racism and colonisation. So I'll begin with cost, um, and cost is, no, is nothing new, it's a well-known factor and barrier to health access, uh, particularly among um, Māori and other Indigenous peoples. Um, it's not something that's just isolated to New Zealand, it's something that affects um, overseas Indigenous peoples as well. Um, one of the major um, modifiable barriers identified in the literature were co-payments, particularly around uh, GP um, appointments, general practice appointments, um, and uh, of prescriptions. Um, these were seen as something that um, were modifiable and could help um, if reduced help access um, for high needs um, communities to health care. Financial cost wasn't limited to that as well, it was also um, transport was a big uh, factor, um, not only the cost of accessing their own transport, um, but also running of the transport, but also um, large whānau um, found it logistically hard um, if they were required to use a public service to try and get, say, 10 people on, on a bus or, or use a taxi. It was just not very feasible and was quite costly. So these were introduced barriers. Costs not only in terms of finances, but also in terms of time, an emotional cost in terms of juggling um, care of tamariki and um, within the whānau um, if one, one member of the whānau was ill and needed to go to hospital urgently. Uh, the next key theme was um, Māori experiences in the health system. Um, these experiences are significant in terms of um, health care access and both perspectives, perspectives of um, Māori utilising the service but also practitioners um, providing for whānau um, were important in, in health care access. Um, Māori whānau on the whole in the literature didn't report an overly positive experience mm. in the utilisation of health systems. Um, this came from an area of um, suspicion and fear from negative past experiences dealing with the health service. Um, from the practitioner perspective um, in the literature, Tauriwi practitioners often felt um, some of their Māori patients were more difficult to deal with and they, their perspective was that they had a laissez-faire approach to health. Um, we also know that um, this was underpinned by practitioners noting a significant, um, uh, significantly lower level of health literacy among Māori, which also um, made self-empowerment harder um, and therefore poorer health, health outcomes as a result. We did notice though that um, Kopapa Māori services were generally experienced positively and those working within those services, be Pākehā or Māori practitioners, um, were seen positively by whānau. Um, the main um, 
the main idea here why they were seen positively was that um, practitioners embraced ronga um, also and utilised whaka whanaumatanga to build relationship and rapport um, between um, doctor and, and patient. The last um, uh, key identification in the literature was the issue of racism um, and this is a significant health determinant and we know this across um, not only in the New Zealand literature but in um, international literature as well um, and it, sig it significantly affects health determinants and if we look at this diagram on determinants of health we can see that um, in the inside we have individual factors that affect health such as age, uh, sex, other constitutional factors, ethnicity and as we move to the outside we look at greater social factors that have a bearing on health that drive health as well so do people have access to adequate housing, do they have good quality sanitation, do they have access to healthcare services, um, do they have financial stability, are they employed, what's their working environment like. So there's a multitude of factors going on and um, institutional racism in particular um, will um, uh, impact on these outer constructs. And what I mean by institutional racism is racism that um, causes differential access in materials such as um, education, housing, water and sanitation to infrastructure and that's built in the actual infrastructure itself and the policy um, but also to power and control of individuals so uh, the ability of whānau to um, be self-determinant of their own health and reach their own health goals and aspirations. Um, we also know that it that um, if you are socially assigned an incorrect race, this will affect your health outcome. Mm -hmm. um, we also know that um, that race racism can affect, in, in terms of health access, the quality of access and the access to these health determinants. Um, in New Zealand literature, in particular, we noted that. Um, those who experience racism um, have lower uh, physical functioning, um, they have poorer mental health and more likely to suffer from depression and anxiety. This is particularly prominent amongst um, uh, prison populations where there is already a high burden of mental health to begin with. Um, to give you some of the figures, approximately 60% of the New Zealand prison population will have a depression, anxiety or some personality disorder, uh, disorder. about 20% um, contemplate suicide um, and about 90% suffer from substance abuse or addiction in some way, shape or form. Um, we also know that um, those who experience racism will, um, as part of these negative health effects will draw on increased coping mechanisms and this might manifest as increased alcohol or smoking or other illicit drug use. <coughs> so that's a very broad and brief summary of the literature involved that we used to draw upon and then um, help inform our practice and uh, methodology and um, what type of questions we would use um, in the interviews to elicit um, useful um, um, and best themes from, from our Fano. And I'd just like to introduce Kavita, who's going to talk to you a little bit more about that in terms of the methodology. Thank you. Uh, kia ora everyone. I'm just going to go through and talk a little bit about um, how we went about conducting our study and our project. So what you see up on the screen are the four main categories that we allocated all our interviewees into. Um, the first group up there is the final group, and they're um, considered the most important group in our study because we, we needed their input in their opinions about what they think are barriers and enabling factors and what they um, would like as suggestions for the, um, for the health system to improve. So um, the final group included 11 members and they were divided into four groups um, and they were all chosen by CART um, because they CART believed that they were representative of what every well, most final experience in terms of health care and health services. The second group up there is the health, well, no. the third group up there is the health practitioner group, and that included 11 people as well, 
and we interviewed um, ED doctors um, and nurses as well as um, clinicians from Aotearoa Health Services and Newtown Union Health Services. Um, and the Modi Health experts um, included nine, um, nine people that we interviewed and they included um, Modi leaders, um, advocates, um, academics and staff at uh, relevant government agencies such as Ministry of Health and Ministry of Social Development and agencies like that and also Maori Health Development um, groups at the CCDHB. Um, these two groups were used so that we can get an opinion and their opinions on their views about what they think barriers and enabling factors and um, solutions could be for um, Fano to access healthcare. Um, we, the, the study we conducted was a qualitative study and we incorporated the Kopapa Mori um, methodology within our study as well. Um, this was incorporated through the leadership role that CART played um, in, our, in our study. The Kopapa Mori research is defined as a theory and analysis of the context of research which involves Mori and of the approaches to research with, by and for Mori. Um, we were able to use this methodology um, because, CART, um, because of CART's guidance um, in helping us select the final members that we interviewed, um, and also um, by our supervisor, Dr. Kerry, Dr. Kerry Lawson Te Aho. Um, it was especially evident when um, the CART members and also Dr. Kerry was, um, were present at the final um, interviews with us so that we could keep with the Tikanga protocols um, that were necessary. Um, to keep consistency during the interviews, uh, we had an interview template that we provided for all our interviewers. Um, and they had the three main questions that we needed to ask um, everyone, which are what are the barriers to um, accessing healthcare, what are the enabling factors, and what solutions would they suggest. But these questions were phrased differently for each group because obviously um, they were asked differently for the final groups compared to the health practitioner and the um, health, Maori health expert groups. Um, but the only difference between the two the, the groups were that the health practitioners and the health, Maori health experts were asked what they thought was their definition of how to reach, um, how to reach whānau. Um, during the analysis stage of the interview, um, we conducted a thematic analysis. So we tried to draw out themes from each of the interviews, um, the major themes that the uh, as uh, students um, thought were coming out from the interview, and then we grouped them together to see if there were any common themes among um, each of the, the groups. Um, yes, now I'd like to ask for the narrative. I work with one guy who was like the hit man for the black car. He just had this thing with violence, and it hit women, it hit kids, it hit old people. Even, even fellows that were pulling guns at him. He got shot six times and he took the gun off the fellow that shot him and knocked him over the head with it. Uh, that's how violent a person he was. I worked with him for over 15 years. After 15 years, he stood on the stage at Michael Flower Centre in a Kapaka competition. He did the haka as hard as he could. And when we came off, he goes, bro, why don't you tell me about this shit? I could be as violent as I could on stage, and no one's after me, and I'm not going to be arrested. And I'm like, well, bro, for 15 years I've been telling you about this. But after one year, I didn't give up. After 10 years, I didn't give up. And I think that's what makes a huge difference, is that the whānau knows those experiences. They know that we're in it for the long haul. Thanks, Eugene. Um, I'd like to call Dana and Caroline up to uh, talk about the results from our study. <coughs> Dana and I are going to talk about the eight key themes that emerged from our analysis of the interviews. The impacts of barriers on access to healthcare are quite diverse and the impacts of these um, include whānau not seeking health care at all or doing so reluctantly. Um, the barriers cause them to present with more serious illnesses like later in the course of an illness. They reduce the quality of care that whānau receive and they also make it less likely that whānau are willing to return to health services. So our first theme was affordability.
The costs associated with healthcare were discussed by most of the groups that we interviewed. These costs are unaffordable for many whānau. Examples were provided of whānau making trade-offs between the cost of healthcare and paying for other living expenses. Some examples were given during the interviews of low-cost GP services um, and also of providers paying for transport and these were seen as enablers to better access to healthcare services. So our second theme is competing priority. So during the interviews it was recognised that um, Fano had a lot of things going on which made healthcare um, not so much a top priority. So accessing healthcare can be a problem if it takes up a lot of time, <coughs> such as waiting in the waiting room to see a doctor for up to three hours or more. And um, this meant that whānau would miss out on work, so they'll have to take time off work to go and see a doctor, or taking their children out of school in order to see the doctor. So this was identified as a competing priority. A mother spoke about a past experience where her daughter fell off the table and split her head open. On arrival to ED, the whānau was told that they could either wait for four to five hours before being seen or pay $75, the majority of their weekly food budget, and be seen straight away at the after-hours clinic. She was stuck between a rock and a hard place. My daughter is my number one priorities, priority, and you guys just took away my second priority, feeding my kids. Our third theme is logistics. Thank you for that um, narrative. So aside from cost issue, issues, Fano and providers discussed the practical difficulties of accessing healthcare. For example, arranging childcare, especially in emergencies, and coordinating transport for uh, different whānau members at different times. Also issues around parking and having to deal with parking and transport while you're, for example, at the hospital receiving care. Mm. Our fourth theme is health literacy, and this was identified as an important factor. Um, this includes whānau knowledge of um, medical conditions and how the health system works. So low health literacy is a barrier and many people identified a need to increase whānau knowledge so they feel more in control of their health care. There was no explanation, nothing, no information. This went on for two weeks and we didn't want to hurt their feelings but it's our right as parents to get a second opinion. Mm. Just wondering if John Key's kids would get the same thing. Our fifth theme is whānau perceptions. This theme looks at the way whānau view healthcare and health practitioners. Most of these perceptions are due to previous negative experiences in the health system. Fear, suspicion and a strong sense of mistrust in health professionals and health services we discussed. Our sixth theme was discrimination. So this theme includes <coughs> racism and discrimination based on health workers' um, assumptions about the so social situation and gang affiliation of whānau. Um, this was widely discussed across all groups um, as a very important barrier which affects the quality of care provided by health professionals. It affects whānau morale and perception of the health system. And overall, it reduces the use of health services by whānau and their community. The hard to reach thing comes because of the labelling. Just because your father was a gang member. So when the police recognise your name, they see you as being a gang member. Health professionals should just treat people as people regardless of who they are, where they're from, or what they wear, or who they're related to. Kia ora. Our seventh theme is service design and focus. 
The design of health services was discussed by all of the people that we interviewed. Overall, it was considered that the health system is set up in a way that's not inclusive or empowering for Fano. Specific issues include waiting times in hospital for GP appointments, whether services are provided in a culturally appropriate space and way, and integration between medical care and social services which help to uh, look at the social determinants of health. The philosophy or focus of a service was considered an important factor and the whānau order approach was seen as an empowering and pragmatic way to improve the health status of whānau. And our last theme was, um, is individual quality of care. So this includes um, the one-on-one -on -one relationship between a doctor or a health worker with the whānau. Um, and this was discussed by all groups, um, especially the whānau. Um, the quality of this relationship impacts whānau engagement, their comfort levels and ongoing use of health services. Um, so as a barrier, this could, um, whānau has identified some doctors as not having time for them, not explaining things properly, or poor delivery of bad news um, in the middle of the corridor. Um, so. So, in conclusion, uh, for the results section, these are the eight themes that emerged from our analysis of the interviews. And now we'd like to hand over to Willie and Zainab who will discuss the implications of these findings. <coughs> Kia ora. So Zainab and I are going to talk about uh, nine recommendations that, as the project, we kind of came to these conclusions. So, to start off with, all groups we interviewed have highlighted the interwoven nature that these barriers brought up. They kind of all link together and it's right across society. Many of the uh, roots of these conditions were created during the time of colonisation and they have led to an enduring sense of historical injustice. So we've taken the Fano order model approach to this project and uh, interwoven that into our recommendations. The overarching aim of this is to provide better outcomes for Māori. The barriers, enablers and solutions uh, discussed during interviews and discovered throughout these interviews have led to a variety of recommendations. Some of these will be geared towards whānau, some will be geared towards health practitioners and their services. Some are geared towards CA, and some are aimed at a governmental level. We recognise that some of these will be difficult to uh, kind of enact overnight. Yet we believe for the best health outcomes, solutions need to come from all levels and need to be pursued throughout our time here. Kia ora. Uh, so to try and reduce the cost and logistical issues around transport, um, we think a community shuttle would be a really good idea. So um, an example of this would be a cart-owned shuttle that would go around and pick up whānau from their homes and bring them into Newtown um, when they otherwise wouldn't have come in to seek health care. So they come into Newtown, they can go to the GP, go to the pharmacy, um, anything like that, and then there'd be a designated meeting spot that would leave about three, the, bus, the shuttle would leave from about three times a day and take whānau back home. Um, and we recognise that CART has already applied for this funding and it was denied, but we believe that this is a really worthwhile sort of um, initiative and we believe that everyone should still be advocating for it. Um, and so through this, final are placed at the centre of <coughs> service provision and by reducing this logistical barrier, we hope that this will achieve better outcomes for the whānau. Our second recommendation is for free or further subsidised GP services. Now organisations such as CART and health providers play an important role in advocating for this change. We recommend that these changes occur as it is the first step of Fano uh, interacting with health services. If we can get Fano interacting with health services then this should have a flow on effect um, of making Fano more familiar with the service and kind of following up on health conditions that they have. It also allows the whānau to develop self-empowerment. 
Keeping in mind the Fano Auto model, these recommendations will require an active and responsive government, where careful decisions need to be made around resource alloc allocations that align the goals of the Fano, Hapu, and Iwi with those of the government. <coughs> this needs to be a collaborative approach. The better health uh, outcomes that can be produced from getting people in and seeing services also has a flow-on effect in the Fano's life. For example, having a, better uh, having a better health leads to being able to work. This leads to possibly better housing conditions, which then has a flow-on effect back to health. So you'd need to incorporate all those self, uh, health determinants that we saw earlier. A health provider the group spoke to acknowledged that Fane often has numerous things going on in their lives and it is not realistic that health is always their first priority. When you sit down and talk about what the pressures or priorities are for a person's life at the moment, diabetes is often number nine or ten. There's debt, food, money, court fines, kids, troubles with the family, agencies and schools, and then there's diabetes. Thank you. Um, so because the tamariki of whānau are so valued and put as first priority, it's only logical that when the parents have to be away from their children to seek health care, that the children are in a trusted environment where uh, the whānau <coughs> don't have to go out of the, their way or out of pocket. Um, so our recommendation here is to facilitate some sort of um, child care service within the whānau's own communities. Um, so by connecting parents uh, within, the, within these areas, um, they can act as a collective whānau, caring for one another's children when the need arises, such as in an emergency situation. Our next recommendation is around health promotion. During our time at CART, we uh, saw two of the programs that they've been running that have really brought the community in. The first of these is the Bye Bye Puku Challenge, that involves bringing Fano into the cart uh, premises and they do some exercises and there's also diet advice incorporated into, these, uh, into the program. The second one was an anti-smoking <coughs> campaign that um, would also look at um, if a partner was smoking as well, they'd bring both of the couple in and that kind of helps to reinforce that kind of quit smoking across the board and uh, creating that supportive environment for the couple. We would like to see other services modelling what CART have done and we would like the advertisement of these programs throughout this Fano community. Um, by advertising you will hopefully bring in more people to these services and this will ultimately have a, the benefit of improving health within the community. This is the principle of Fano action and engagement. This involves arming whānau with the knowledge and skills to achieve better health outcomes for themselves. Um, so already in place at the moment are Pacific Health Navigators and these people have proven to facilitate uh, contact between Pacific families and the healthcare service. Um, and so we believe it would be a really great idea if we could adopt the same principle um, for whānaus and therefore have Māori Health Navigators. Um, and an example that was given to us by an interviewee is that um, these navigators would guide Fano through the process of um, an appointment such as making sure that they go to the right waiting room, go to the right reception, um, sit with them while they're waiting and let them know that yep, it's pretty normal to be waiting for maybe over half an hour and it's all, it's all this, the right process. Um, and they would allow for um, facilitating engagement between Fano and uh, the doctor and also mediating any communication breakdowns. When one Fano member was four months pregnant, she came into hospital with abdominal pain. She was shuffled between multiple doctors and surgeons. I went from ward to ward, seven to three to six, back to seven. I even spent time in isolation. Who knows why? I was given two injections in my thigh twice a day. I was like, what's that for? She never did find out what was going on and was discharged without any follow-up. Thanks for that. 
Our sixth recommendation is a partnership between the University of Wellington, uh, University of Otago, sorry, Wellington School of Medicine, and the CART services. Um, we'd like to look at possibly producing a health day where students from the fourth year during their public health and GP run, which we are on at the moment, <laughs> would take a day out um, and go into the community. And uh, this kind of health day could be run, for example, in a Newtown community hall or over in Strathmore somewhere. Um, and it would aim to provide free health promotion uh, around some information around chronic illnesses that uh, the whānau may be suffering from. Uh, also some management advice and other health checks which the medical students uh, are competent in. Now whānau could then make the most of these opportunities as there's six groups of us that go through the public health and GP run so you'd have six days throughout the year. And we uh, realise that there are these kind of time, uh, the work uh, pressures and time pressures. So we were contemplating whether the student body would be um, like willing to go in on a weekend or um, if there were people who are available during the week. So that involves more communication between CART and the university. Uh, we, this also doesn't just benefit the whānau, but also benefits the medical students, as it helps with the development of our cultural competency, and um, also helps us with our practical skills of delivering healthcare <coughs> to people in general. We would love for this to produce trust in the future doctors, as we will hopefully go on to become doctors who are treating... <laughs> These Fano, the Tamariki, and the Mokapuna. Um, so we've heard a lot about um, having a Fano approach to healthcare rather than an individualist approach, um, and so we think it'd be a good idea to have an integrated and coherent healthcare service. And um, what we mean by that is having one location, one site that whānau can come to and see a GP, a social worker, a nurse, a physio, dentist, um, anything like that. Um, so that's a collaborative approach. And this allows a simpler and more holistic um, take on healthcare. Our eighth recommendation is for um, around further cultural competency training. Now, we would love to see for compulsory com uh, cultural competency training for staff across all health services. This includes health practitioners and frontline staff who are at the counter so that when you first make that interaction with the health service, you're dealing with someone who is culturally competent. We think it would be great for the DHB to take this on and look at what uh, processes they have in place for cultural competency. Improving cultural competency helps to reduce everyday stereotyping and bias towards Māori patients. With proper understanding of tikanga Māori, health practitioners can improve whānau experiences with the healthcare system. And the term cultural competency itself suggests that there is a level that can be attained, but we would rather that it uh, be kind of reworded to cultural collaboration as this implies that there will be an ongoing relationship with whānau. Um, so interviewing whānau has been really just a valuable experience for us in helping to understand what changes need to be made as we become the future generation of doctors. Um, and we think that more feedback, good and bad, um, needs to be provided to the healthcare service um, so that they can understand what changes need to be made also. Um, so we're encouraging um, Bano to voice their concerns or their, what they're happy about um, and we're also encouraging um, healthcare practitioners to have an open door policy to feedback and also to um, make Bano aware of this. When we asked Bano members what advice they would have for future medical professionals, they said... If you're dealing with us, I'd say make the effort. Let us know. It's okay not to know. Just try to be as open as possible and try to find a way to build a trust with us 
so that we can stop not trusting you. We don't not want to trust, but my mum didn't, and I'm going not to, and it's not going to stop until someone beats the bigger person. So hopefully my big mouth and your father's degrees might actually be able to do something good. Thanks. We'll now go over to Grace and Matt to close out the session. Thank you, Dakota. I'll just start by um, running through some of the study limitations. Um, firstly, the time frame um, was reasonably short, it was only five weeks, um, so it ended up being unrealistic for us to transcribe all of the interviews. Um, this would have made our data analysis a lot more comprehensive, and um, we potentially introduced interview advice as the inclusion of key statements, themes and quotes were dependent on what individual interviewers deemed as being important. And um, we attempted to combat this by using an analysis template uh, to make data interpretation consistent across the board. Uh, some of the Māori health experts we interviewed were from around the country, um, and this did not technically fit in with our research definition of limiting the study to South Wellington. And um, we included their viewpoints given they were consistent with the key themes that um, emerged from local providers. And their input also strengthens our recommendations that are applicable at a national level. We also have multiple people doing the interviews and to avoid any major variations um, in information gathering, we used a template with key questions and prompts. Um, also the interviews were carried out in pairs and they were all recorded. Um, so for study strengths, um, one of the key ones was using Fano Order as a framework to base our study methodology around. Um, it enabled us to carry out data collection in a culturally appropriate manner and we were able to formulate recommendations that are in keeping with Fano Order's Fano Centred initiatives. Uh, by using a co Māori approach, we aim to empower study participants by valuing their cultural context. Um, by using a qualitative study design, the research uh, is more compelling compared to that of a quantitative study as it draws upon uh, real life experiences and gives a voice to the people who are intended to benefit from the study. And um, one of the really key strengths of our study was the relationship building that took part um, between CART and the medical school as well as medical students in Fano. Uh, we were able to gain insights from Fano that we otherwise wouldn't have had access to. CART's involvement also provided a space for Fano to feel safe and empowered them to talk freely during the interviews. Cool. So um, now that you've heard most of our presentation, you're probably starting to get some ideas and thoughts about the topic yourself. But something we'd really like to hit home and have you take away from this presentation <coughs> is the emphasis and importance of building good relationships mm. and uh, building trust with the whānau. Because uh, making the economic and logistical changes like reducing cost and having to transport there with the shuttle system um, will increase the ability to access the health system, but Fano could still not um, come if they haven't been having the positive relationships and have still been having negative experiences um, and the communication hasn't quite been there and they still don't feel really cared about or worried about. So we think that's something that we really want you to take away is that um, building the relationships is key to uh, the whole thing we've been talking about today. So, um, from here I'd just like to say that we have really enjoyed this uh, topic and it's been a privilege to be interacting with all Fano and everyone that was involved um, and we hope that something comes out of this and some changes start to happen uh, and it gets taken to the next step. Um, we definitely are all more culturally aware and uh, <coughs> more, what's the word? Uh, prepared for encounters with Fano in the future and hopefully we can build that trust uh, and the relationships and sort of make your experience a bit better with the healthcare system. Uh, and I'd just like to thank everyone for coming today uh, and especially thank everyone involved. So Kitty, uh, Richard and Anaru, thanks heaps for your advice. It made it a lot smoother than if it was just us. Um, 
and especially the, the Hanny and Isaac, they are the project leaders and they were definitely the right guys for the job and made it a lot smoother and really put everything into it. So cheers guys. Um, and most importantly thanks to Cart and everyone we interviewed. Thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule um, and sharing your experiences with us and being honest with us. Uh, it's really helped and it wouldn't have been possible without you, so we can't thank you enough. Mm -hmm. So if you do, we'll just put our hands together for everyone of us. Right, so after all that, if anyone has any questions, we're more than happy to take them. There's no questions, that's great, and we can finish. Up to you guys. three hours for an appointment, uh, limited staff on the ground, uh, a lot of burnout as well. And so what what we're saying is that um, CART need a lot more resources in order to get support and helping uh, the hard to reach, the most at risk, the high statistics. Um, we've been working along CART for many, many moons as part of Haa Mokai. And um, they're still at the bottom of the barrel, you know, in terms of institutional racism, you talk about that. We're looking a lot more at refugee and migrants. You know, there's a lot more in the waiting rooms than there are Māori uh, and Pacifica. And I think that the initiative here is a good start for CART to actually get some evidence-based stuff so that they can actually get the resources to help the people. Because it's really difficult to help the whānau even when you try. I think that GPs do need to be culturally competent and to be culturally collaborative because they're not. Um, it is uh, an issue uh, for me as a staff member, it is me, uh, an issue for me at, on the board as well, being a Māori representative for the community. Um, CART do a really, um, really good work. I'm not even from Wellington, but they do a lot of work for uh, Wellington itself alongside uh, Well Health PHO and New Town Union Health Service. And so I think collaborative, collaboratively how uh, Otago Wellington um, University going to work alongside CART, I would actually push that initiative within New Town Union Health to support you on your promotion and open day because we've got many GPs that can come out and help do outreach as well. So, ngā mihi māhana tēnei ki a koutou, mō o koutou tautoko o te whānau a kāt, kei te mihi ki a koutou kātou. And just to add on that briefly, I think, with in terms of the funding and stuff, now that we've all had this exposure, we're in a position where we understand what's going on now and we really have a responsibility to help advocate in health circles, which we're exposed to, to then hopefully which will feed on and help you guys when you do find send in that application in the long term. Yeah, but thank you. Yeah, you recommend it. Kia ora. Um, sorry, I'm here. I work in the Department of Public Health. Thanks. Um, your recommendations are a real mixture of some really big um, issues and some really small, specific um, issues. And I just wondered what you thought about um, recommendation two, talking about free and subsidised GP services for whānau. What about... Um, GP services that were free at point of entry for all New Zealanders. What would you think about that? What would you think about actually thinking about this as an example of things that we could make available across the board? Well, that's, um, that's a really good point, and I think we, we built on that from recently they've installed free GP for under 16s? Under 13s. Under, under, under 13s. And there was some information floating around. It costs $71 million to do that as part of the budget. 
excuse me, my numbers may not be 100% correct, but the relative amount of money to include that up to under 18, am I correct in saying that, would be five or six million, and I know that's a huge amount of money at an individual level, but at a government level, when you consider the health benefit of that, that's huge. So yeah, I completely agree with you in that sense. That's something that should really be, be pushed for, so improve health outcomes enormously. We're looking at the most hard to reach. Yeah. You know, these are the people that have inequalities that are not equally shared by all New Zealanders. So we need to look at equality for all. Mm. And so, yeah, I see that. But at the moment, not even Māori Pacific are getting those sort of treatments. So I think the social determinants of health actually impact on Māori Pacific that actually Māori signed a treaty, you know, with the Kawanatan. And so I'm saying that, you know, great all health for free for everybody, but currently when you're at the high risk, no one's actually looking at them at all. No one's looking at Māori. We need that support. You know, we need to uh, get equally the same as what everybody else gets, the same as what John Key gets. You know, and currently we're not. Um, that was the discussion team that did that um, recommendation. And we were coming from the same point of view as Tina here. Um, we were thinking that although it would be great to have free healthcare for everyone, it's not that feasible at a government level. Um, and so if you can target the hard to reach people, these people that aren't accessing healthcare and that by reducing costs you can actually make a huge difference in their life. If we target them first, excuse me, um, then you can, you know, you can increase their healthcare and then from there, if it's really successful, you can say, well, maybe we can make it free for everyone. Just to That's add terrible. onto that, there is a study, the MAMA report that was done in the UK also um, illustrates and suggests that the highest amount of resources need to go into the highest need population to reduce the inequalities within one entire population. So that is research in UK that also backs up this statement. Oh, kia ora. Um, I'm Amanda to the Department of Public Health and Paediatrics. Um, yeah, congratulations on a really wonderful um, research project and uh, presentation. I've got two questions and a comment, um, but I'll start with one question first. <coughs> Did you think about um, the impact of the Whānau Ora initiative that, um, that Tariana Turi has sponsored and has been implemented in the country? Is that, did that come up in any of your interviews or, or research? Particularly when I was, uh, I did a lot of the leader advocate interviews, and that's why we, for our um, research, we kind of tried to integrate the funnel order model into it. And a lot of the advocate um, people that I talked to did mention the funnel order model um, and ways of using that model to try and better the health outcomes. Did I answer your question correctly? Sorry. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems to be a, a really great initiative, and I'm just wondering yeah. how effective um, it has been, particularly for, you know, for the most marginalised. There are, um, it's being implemented within organisations over the past two years, and at present, I think there are 36 organisations that have, are using the final order model. And from discussion with Sir Mason Jury, there is research and evidence that it is working, but I mean, some of the 36 organisations only signed up a few months ago. So it's just in time to get all of the evidence base behind it to actually show that it is working. But from discussions with him, he said that mm -hmm. there is improvements within those organisations. Could be another opening for a collaboration between CART and medical students um, or an order um, providers. Um, my next question is a relatively simple one, and it's to follow on from the earlier comment. Did, uh, did you invite some of the DHB planners and funders to attend the presentation? Um, because it, I mean, it just seems such important <coughs> stuff. We, sorry, we did. Um, today is actually the launch at Parliament of the um, new Māori Health Strategy. So a lot of people that I did invite are actually at Parliament today. Uh, just around the corner, um, which is very unfortunate timing because we were also invited to attend that, but that's just the way it worked out today. Right. 
Um, and just my, my final um, comment. Um, I was really interested to see your um, mention that tamariki were seen as highly valued and, and priority. Um, and that led into the discussion about needing to have um, childcare facilities or you know, arrangements made. And it, it starts to tap into the, um, the whole issue of um, child and whanau centred care, which you lead into you know, whanau centred care. Um, uh, but it really just expands that a little bit um, to embed children in, in that model as well. And there's some really wonderful work going on in Manaya Flacho in Northland, where they've got a child and whanau friendly framework, which we're implementing. And it really embeds um, children quite strongly. Uh, and I think there are other reasons for, for doing that, into having a child-centred lens um, applied. Um, thinking about some of your dimensions of marginalisation, so for example, um, your prisoners, people who've been in prison, um, families. Um, uh, I've seen some research where you know, a really huge percentage um, of, of that population, um, and also people with mental illness, for example, have been exposed to child abuse and neglect, um, and have been exposed to the care and protection system. Um, which you know has has had um, problems um, um, uh, in the past um, and probably currently. You know, a phenomenal figure of, of people who've been exposed to child abuse and other abuse conditions in early childhood, which go on to have these um, um, you know outcomes later on in life. And it's really a, a good argument for really embedding children more centrally and thinking about how to um, you know provide services and improve outcomes for the most marginalised. So the pregnant woman um, example, you know, that, that was talked about. So really embedding that early intervention in the early years, um, I think, is, uh, would be would be really useful as well. Um, and that was it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I just um, wanted to make a comment about the uh, final water copper. So CART um, does hold one contract under the uh, Whānau Water Kaupapa and, and, it, and actually the Whānau Water concept, as Tariana has developed it, is one that um, suits not just the marginalised Whānau but every Whānau in, in New Zealand. Um, but the part that is difficult to deal with in terms of her concept of um, collaboration is, is from a funding perspective. So some of the contracts that um, CART holds um, we, we can't, as an organisation, know the different determinants of health and contracts come from specific departments that um, would have contractual requirements that doesn't allow you to work outside those requirements. So if, the, if it came from, say, Ministry of Health or DHB, then um, addressing the employment issues isn't part of your contract. Yet, that is one of the determinants to their, their, their good health, you know. So, the collaboration needs to come from a government perspective as well, so that they can see or or pull their funding, because one of our contracts is also from MSD, and that is um, part of stage two of the final uh, final order concept about addressing violence within within the whanau. But some of the violence stems from um, a range of areas, you know, unemployment and um, issues with um, with wounds and, and a whole range of things. You know? So that is that particular contract has a, a broader. Um, scope where some of the health contracts are specific to health and yeah, so it's what would be helpful is that um, yeah, the, 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 the government departments collaborate to um, to give the resources to the um, to where they need it and so that it's not so you know uh, tunnel vision and yeah, just wanted to respond to that. Shall we call it there then?
Bookie PA Cloud for you to select in your Newtown Union. PA Kimmy Gas at Cloud for you to walk car. Langatia, Kaywang and New York. PA Kalkapa. Ma. No data. Kitanu Kina. Kayong Ake. Amen. 